Hi class, this is Kaito Pearson, and our group will be covering chapter 8, which is focused on memory. I'll be covering pages 341 to 344. Retrieval failure. Retrieval failure or forgotten memories that still are memories that are unretrieved. This occasionally happens when there's an interference or there's a motivational forgetfulness. An example of this is remembering somebody's name. We often don't remember somebody's name soon as they tell us, so we need a retrieval clue, which could be the letter of their first name or something they say that reminds you of their name. In my slide, I have a picture of a guy looking at a little poster that says, note to self, remember the thing you said you was going to remember today. If soon as you meet somebody and you have a problem with uh, remembering their name, a trick you could do is repeating the name over and over in your head, and you'll get their name. For my second slide, I'll be going over proactive and retroactive interference. As we know, as we get older, we, get, we retain more and more information that usually causes memory cluttering. This is often overwhelming for a lot of people. When new information collides with old information, and you get all mixed up. I have a, a picture of this where it has a, where it shows new memory and then normal memory, which put together is like this new messed up like memories like a false memory you have, which is usually close but never precise, which I will be going over in my next slide. Now on my next slide, I'll be covering repression and reconsolidation. Repression is a key point to Segment Hughes' psychoanalytic theory. He shows us that, or he proves that, to protect our self-concept, we often repress painful information. So traumatic experiences or uh, painful memories are often repressed. Our memory is not precise, meaning all memory is false to an extent, to an extent. When retrieving stored memory, they have the potential of being changed before being stored once again. To show this, I have a picture in my slide that shows a guy's uh, brain with a bandage on it, which is more of repression. Slide five, misinformation effect. When we are told misleading information, we often don't remember the occurrence or the pattern it happened in. So, when, with, without even being aware of this. So we often accidentally create false memories. So in my slide, I have a picture of a car hitting another car with no damage done, and uh, another picture of the same thing where there's actually a lot of damage done to both cars. For my last slide, I'll be going over memory construction. Like I said before, memory construction is also not precise like memory. When retrieving memories, we commonly replace the original memory with a version that is slightly modified. And we don't do this on purpose, but it just happens. A good example is a, a stop sign and a yield sign you saw a light back. You don't remember if it was a stop or a yield. Another good example is when describing a suspect. Uh, we often make a mistake with facial hair or no facial hair. We usually fill in our, uh, the gaps in our memories with assumption and guesses that create a memory. Well, thank you guys. That is it for me.